Good evening, aspirants. Welcome to Daily Newspaper Analysis brought you by Shankar AS Academy. Today's date is 1st of April 2025. So, these are the four topics we are going to discuss in today's newspaper discussion. The first article is about the joint crediting mechanism between India and Japan. The second article is about the Sangeetha Kalanidhi Award. The third article is about Bioeconomy Report. The fourth one is about the basics of neutrinos. So, these are the four important prelims topics we are going to discuss in this video. Now, let us get into the discussion. Now look at this news, India and Japan are preparing to sign a memorandum of cooperation to establish a joint crediting mechanism that is JCM. This initiative will enable both countries to share their emission reduction credits. This will be done under Article 6 of Paris Agreement. This joint crediting mechanism will help in implementing the low carbon technologies and infrastructure projects. So this will benefit both nations in their efforts to combat climate change. So this is the news. In this context, let us discuss elaborately about the joint crediting mechanism. This topic comes under GS2 and also GS3. In GS2, it comes under Governance, International Relations and GS3, it comes under Environment, Economy and Science and Technology. JCM, that is Joint Crediting Mechanism, is initiated by Japan, which is a system to facilitate the transfer of low carbon technologies from Japanese companies to developing nations. In return, Japan receives carbon credits for emissions reduced through these technologies. So, the objective is to create a win-win situation for Japan and also for the receiving country where the developing countries can receive the investment and the clean technology and the Japan can receive the emission reductions in order to meet their nationally determined contributions that is NDC and NDC is a part of Paris Agreement 2015. So, this joint crediting mechanism is a simple method where Japan gives the cleaner technologies to developing countries and in turn Japan receives the carbon credits to fulfill their nationally determined contributions under Paris Agreement. So, now the joint crediting mechanism is going to be signed between India and Japan. So, Japan will provide us the decarbonization efforts, they will invest in our decarbonization efforts and they introduce advanced clean energy technology. So, with that we can reduce the emissions in India. In return, India will benefit from the technology transfer, the infrastructure development and Japan can receive the emission reductions towards their own climate targets. So, this is the basis of this joint crediting mechanism between India and Japan. The emission reductions under this joint crediting mechanism will be tracked using a registry system. So, this will ensure the transparency and accountability and a joint committee composed of representatives from both countries will oversee the implementation projects. So, this mechanism guarantees that both India and Japan receive fair benefits from their contributions in climate actions. Now, look at this prelims practice question. The primary objective of joint crediting mechanism between India and Japan, the correct answer is option B, facilitating the transfer of low carbon technology and infrastructure. So, with this, let us wind up the discussion. Here, we are going to discuss about the Sangeetha Kalanadi Award. Recently, renowned Carnatic musician Rudra Patna has been selected as the recipient of this year's Sangeetha Kalanadi Award. So, this is one of the highest honors in the field of Carnatic music. And this award is given by Music Academy of Chennai. So, in this context, let us discuss about the Sangeetha Kalanadi Award. Sangeetha Kalanadi Award, which literally means the treasure of music and art. It is considered the most prestigious recognition in Carnatic music. It is awarded annually by Madras Music Academy. This Madras Music Academy is one of the oldest and most reputed institutions dedicated to preserving the Carnatic music. This Madras Music Academy was established in 1928 and it was founded as a result of Indian National Congress session which is held in Madras in December 1927. The main objective behind the establishment of this academy is to promote and preserve the Carnatic music and Bharatanatyam. This Sangeetha Kalanidhi Award consists of a gold medal, a Birudu Patra, which is a citation. Since 2005, the award is also received M.S. Subbulakshmi Award, which was instituted by Hindu in the honor of legendary Carnatic singer M.S. Subbulakshmi. Now, let us see the historical significance of this award. So, during early 20th century, the Carnatic music and Bharatanatyam were undergoing a revival and recognition. At the time, a lawyer, a freedom fighter named Krishna Iyer, played a crucial role in restoring the status of Bharatanatyam. This classical dance has unfortunately suffered from social stigma because it was associated with the Devadasis. There were efforts from the cultural reformers like Krishna here and many institutions like Madras Music Academy 
and they helped in reviving and reshaping the perception of Bharatanatyam. If you look at the Carnatic music, it is one of the two main classical music traditions of India. One is Carnatic music and another one is Hindustani music. Hindustani music mostly developed in North India and the Carnatic music developed in Southern states. Now look at the prelims practice question. Which of the following is a distinguishing feature of Carnatic music? The correct answer is option C. Mela Karta system of 72 parent ragas. With this, let us wind up the discussion and move to the next article. Now we are going to discuss about India's bioeconomy report, which is re released recently. And this bioeconomy report estimates that India's bioeconomy is valued at over 165 billion dollars. So the bioeconomy is contributing 4.2 percentage to the country's GDP. In this context, let us discuss the basics of bioeconomy. This topic comes under GS paper three. Bioeconomy is a industrial use of biological resources such as plants, animals, microorganisms in order to produce goods and services. Bioeconomy also means replicating the natural biological process for industrial applications. Now let us discuss about the India's bioeconomy report and this report is published by Department of Biotechnology which functions under Ministry of Science and Technology. The key findings of the report, the bioeconomy is valued at nearly double than 2020. So, in 2024, the bioeconomy's value has nearly doubled compared to 2020 report. So, this is a rapid growth of bioeconomy in India. There is also rising participation of industries in bioeconomy. The number of companies in bioeconomy has increased by 90% from 2021 to 2024. So, this is a huge increase in the participation of industries in bioeconomy. By 2030, the bioeconomy sector in India is projected to employ 35 million people. So, it has a lot of employment potential. The industries involving in bioeconomy is also increasing rapidly and the value of bioeconomy in India is also increasing rapidly. So, these are the important key findings of this bioeconomy report. Inside bioeconomy of India, the industrial sector contributed nearly 50 percentage of its value. The pharmaceutical sector accounts for 30 for 35 percentage of its value and inside pharmaceutical sector, the vaccines are the biggest contributor. The research and information technology including biotech software development are the fastest growing segment in India's bioeconomy. The top 5 states in India's bioeconomy were Maharashtra, Karnataka, Telangana, Gujarat and Andhra Pradesh. These 5 states together contributed more than two third of India's bioeconomy's value. The eastern states and the northeastern states accounted only less than 6 percentage of total contribution. Now let us look at the achievements in India's bioeconomy. So India is one of the world's leading producer of vaccine and India also produced the world's first DNA COVID-19 vaccine. If you look at the ethanol blending, the share of ethanol in fuel has increased with a target of 20 percentage blending by 2025. Even though India's bioeconomic share in GDP has increasing and now it has reached 4.2 percentage of our GDP, but still some European countries like Italy and Spain have their bioeconomic share of exceeding 20 percentage of their GDP. Our bioeconomy share is comparable to United States and China, but we are still lagging behind the European nations. So this is all about this news. Look at this prelims practice question, which state contributes most to India's bioeconomy? The correct answer is option B, Maharashtra. Let us wind up the discussion and move to the next news article. Recently, the scientists who are working on the Amor experiment in South Korea has found an important finding about nuclear decay. So this Amor experiment is advanced MO based rare process experiment and this experiment is being conducted in South Korea. It is about the nuclear decay. So there are two kinds of nuclear decay that is nuclear double decay. One is neutrino less double beta decay another one is neutrino double beta decay. The, sci the scientist who have been working in this Amor experiment has found out that there is no such neutrino less double beta decay. So this is the news. In this context, we are going to discuss about the basics of neutrino, which is a fundamental particle. So this topic comes under GS paper 3. Neutrinos are tiny subatomic particles which exist all around us. They are second most abundant particles in the universe and the first most abundant particle is photons. Photons make up the light and the second most abundant particle is the neutrinos. The neutrinos were originally created during Big Bang. So Big Bang created the universe. And during this process, the neutrinos were originally created. 
Neutrinos are also produced in radioactive decay, supernova explosions and also during when cosmic rays hit the earth atmosphere. Also note that the sun produces a massive number of neutrinos every second like 60 billion of neutrinos passing through each square meter of earth's surface every second. There is something special about the neutrinos. They are very extremely hard to detect. This is because neutrinos rarely interact with other particles. So this is why neutrino is extremely hard to detect because we can detect a particle only when the particle interacts with other particles. So the interaction of neutrinos with other particle is absolutely nil. So it is very hard or extremely hard to detect neutrinos. Till now scientists also do not know the exact weight of neutrinos or exact mass of the neutrino. See the antiparticle is a uh, opposite charge of every particle. Every particle in the universe has an antiparticle. For example, the electron has an antiparticle called positron. If electron has a negative charge, its antiparticle has a positive charge. But for neutrinos, there is no antiparticle. And one theory suggests that neutrinos are majorana particles, which means neutrinos are their own antiparticles. So this is also an interesting theory about neutrinos. Now coming to the news, the radioactive decay, it is a process where uh, neutrinos or uh, fundamental particles are released over time when the radioactive element decays. So when the radioactive element decays, they emit particles over time. And one type of radioactive decay is a double beta decay. And there are two types of double beta decay. One is two neutrino double beta decay and another one is neutrino less double beta decay. So this neutrino less double beta decay is what we have seen in the news. Now scientists have found that there is no such neutrino less double beta decay which means as I have said earlier there is two types of double beta decay which is two neutrino double beta decay and another one is neutrino less double beta decay. In this neutrino less double beta decay there is no emission of neutrino during the radioactive decay. But this neutrino less double beta decay is not occurring in the nature. So this is what the Amor experiment in South Korea has found. So this is why it appeared in the news. So this is in this context only we are looking at the basics of neutrino. So with this let us wind up the discussion. Look at this prelims practice question. What is unique about neutrino less double beta decay? The correct answer is option C. No neutrinos are emitted violating lepton number conservation. With this, we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video, please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar AS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.